Another test that can be helpful if it's abnormal is the Babinski test. With that, we will hold the metatarsals here in our fingers and stroke the foot upward with the tip stroke the metatarsals upward with the tip of our pleximeter. If this response is positive, the toes will flare up like this, and that indicates that there is a lesion above uh, the level of that reflex arc area, which means probably above L6 somewhere. Evidence of what we call upper motor neuron disease. We also, while we have her in this position, want to palpate her muscles for any atrophy uh, because if there is significant atrophy, it's either going to be from disuse or from nerves. And so we can feel the muscles in his pe her pelvic limbs all the way up her back and, of course, into her thoracic limbs as well to make sure that she has normal muscle mass and that it's equal in what we would expect for this dog. The last thing we're going to test is sensation. Now that we want to test last because if the dog is painful someplace or if we hurt the dog a little bit during our testing, then they might not trust us after that. It may, may, might make the rest of the neurologic examination more difficult. So we're going to begin with the cutaneous trunchi muscle response. And remember the cutaneous trunchi are these thin little muscles which go in this direction along the uh, thoracic wall. Wherever we pinch, and we're going to use our little hemostats to pinch the skin, it's going to ascend into the spinal cord at that level and then ascend up the spinal cord to the second thoracic nerve or a level and exit the thoracic nerve and then go to the tr cutaneous trunchi muscles, the lateral thoracic nerve. So let's see if we can see that. So we pinch the skin and you can see the movement there in association. So not only does it test segmentally at this level, it also tests how impulses are traveling up the spinal cord. So that's an important, very important test for localizing spinal cord lesions. Because if we lose the paniculus or the cutaneous trunchi muscle response, that means the lesion is right around that site someplace. So that's a real helpful localizer for us. The next thing that we want to look at is superficial sensation. And for this, we can poke a little harder. And we're looking now for a behavioral response, for her turning around and looking at me or showing some kind of response, OK? Like getting up and leaving. <laughs> that, that's, that's good. OK, now we're going to do deep palpation for any pain along the vertebral column. And for this, I take my two fingers here and go along the paravertebral muscles, squeezing very hard. See where my left hand is? It's under the abdomen, and I'm supporting her and pinching down pretty hard on these muscles. If she had back pain, she would sink or cry or make some type of behavioral response. So I'm doing pretty deep palpations here. I can also do this on her neck and just feeling the lateral processes and pinching very deeply. And believe me, if they have it, you can come from the top. If they, ha if they have a neck, neck pain, then they really will complain about this. We can also do range of motion for the neck, turn them to the left, turn them to the right, up and down, and get a feeling for how stiff their neck is and if they are having any neck pain. So the last thing we're going to test is deep pain. Deep pain is a very important thing to test in dogs that are paraplegic um, from spinal cord injury or from an acute herniated disc. We're trying to determine the prognosis and how severe the lesion is. Remember we told you, and we usually use the hemostats for this, and I'm going right on the uh, digit, right on the bone, the periosteum, and without much stimulus, she is flexing with a little bit more. You see how she lifted her head and tried to get away. 
Okay, that's the deep pain response. Pulling the leg away is not a deep pain response. They have to show some kind of behavioral response up here. That tells us that it's traveled all the way up the leg, all the way up the spinal cord, all the way through the brain stem up to the sensory part of the brain, particularly the thalamus, to tell us that she has sensation there. So that concludes the neurologic examination. So from this we want to decide is there a lesion above the level of the foramen magnum? And if there is, then can we explain all the findings that we see in the gait and the spinal reflexes and sensation based on a lesion up there? Our cardinal rule is let's make it all fit one focal lesion. If we can't make it fit all one focal lesion, then we must have multifocal disease going on. So we want to make sure that we answer our questions. One, is there a neurologic disease present? Two, is it focal or multifocal? Where is it located? And also how severe it is.